Another fiery topic that has been blowing up social media. If you had not heard, Intuit, Intuit, the tax, we're probably best known for, I think, TurboTax, Intuit TurboTax. The CEO of Intuit sent out an email to all of its employees detailing the decisions and the plans for layoffs that were coming. It affected about 10% of their workforce and pretty massive riff through the organization. And they, it, he has taken some major, major, major heat. In fact, I saw some headlines initially and I had a bit of a visceral reaction to what I saw in the headlines. It was like, you gotta be kidding me. You know, as I'm seeing what, how it was being framed up. Um, but I took the time to actually dig a little deeper and actually read the email that was sent. And I'm going to present a balanced perspective on my reaction to it. And I don't in any way want this to be interpreted as I'm downplaying the serious impact to the people who were impacted by this whole thing. I, it's, it's really unfortunately tragic. And I will be just as hard on Intuit and the CEO because there are definitely some criticisms that I have related to the email itself and the situation. Uh, but at the same time, as I read the actual email, there were a lot of things that I went, hey, this isn't really a fair attack on Intuit and its CEO for what is actually in the content of this email. And that's where I actually had to step back and go, you know, my reaction to some of the headlines I read was not appropriate because what I was reacting to was not accurate. So I'd encourage you, I think there's a, if you actually look for it, you can find it. I read it on India Times or something like that. Not many of the clickbait headlines actually don't show any of the email, it just references things to the email. And that's what I would encourage if anybody reads this or you know has heard about it and is upset or has an opinion on it, I'd actually encourage you to read the email itself. So find something that actually has the whole email. Let me be critical on Intuit first and the CEO, because there were two things that three in particular that I went not cool. And I think there's more that you could have done and you didn't address that. You know, the first one was this. There was not, to me, any accountability placed on the senior most leaders of the organization for how Intuit got to the place it did where it had to make these decisions. And I can just tell you from operating at the executive level of a company and working in the C-suite and in HR organizations where a lot of these decisions are happening, you don't get here overnight. Like there's this perception that like just one day, you know, companies decide this and then it happens. Like this stuff is months, sometimes years in the making. And that doesn't happen without real breakdowns on the most senior levels. And I didn't see any of that it was all, hey, we're great, we're wonderful, everything's positive. And you're like, what are you talking about? Like, no, some critical mistakes were made in this. And that was not acknowledged. And I just don't think that sits well when I read things from senior leaders and go, you don't take any responsibility for this kind of stuff. Like, sorry, you don't get paid the big bucks. You don't sit in the C-suite to not be accountable when things like this blow up. And yeah, it doesn't mean you are responsible for absolutely everything that happens or could possibly know all of the details. But man, when your team loses the game, if you're not looking in the mirror going, man, is there stuff that we could have done differently? And what are those things? And you can't acknowledge that. You don't belong in the role of being the coach. And so I thought that was a little disappointing. I get it. It's a corporate comms. They're probably not going to, you know, whatever they knew would be public. So I understand a little bit and I get it's not just going to be this outpouring of vulnerability, but a dice of it would have been nice. You know, I think the other thing going back to the, you don't get here without things breaking down. One of the things in the email was the fact that it talked about how they aren't actually, they're actually rehiring just as many people as they got rid of which I understand if you're on the outside or if you're an employee, that stings really hard to hear like, wait a minute, what? Like, what, how do you, what do you mean you're gonna just rehire people? And I think with that, the unfortunate part, I'll talk about the other side of this, but the unfortunate part is I actually would press and would be curious, 
how much did the organization really invest in skill development and talent mobility and things like this? Or was layoffs just the easiest path, the path of least resistance? Because I see this a lot in organizations where it's like, oh, well, we have different skill needs or we have different organizational needs. Let's wipe out this group and we'll rehire over here. Instead of actually slowing down and taking the time to go, yeah, but what do we actually have in the organization? Because like I said, this didn't, this isn't a decision that happens overnight. So you had some time to figure out who do we really have? And is there opportunity to move and develop and grow people into this honestly? And not just because it's the right thing to do for the people. Layoffs are stupid expensive. People think it's like a quick way to earnings. Like, no, it's not. They are often far more expensive than keeping people. And the public brand, I mean, good grief, this whole thing, it's it's catastrophic to an organization. It doesn't save you any money. So there's actually cost reasons to mobilize your talent and to reskill and move people around. It's actually in the best interest of the business, which often gets left off the table. So part of me is a little like, come on, like you're telling me there was nothing that could have been done to help this. Now, granted, I'm not there. I'm not on the ins and outs of this. So I won't pretend to know all the details. But I've been around enough companies to know this is usually a big area of opportunity and rarely have organizations really put the time and investment in mobilizing and developing talent so that when something happens, they can move them around rather than just go, eh, you're out, you know, over here. I'll talk about the flip side of that, though. The third thing that I thought was just not cool and the one that I really went, what are you doing? What are you doing? That should have never cleared corporate comms or anything is. Literally in the email, it talks about the people, you know, thanking the people for their contributions, all this. Let's treat them with dignity and respect. And literally like one or two sentences later, it literally calls out basically the whole number as poor performers. And to me, I just went, "What? that is not okay to label and stereotype people who are already struggling with the fact they got laid off as poor performers, not only does that make it harder for them to find a new job because people who read this are like, oh, so all the people who got laid off and into it are poor performers. And I'll tell you right now, no, they're not. I know one, even though I'm not there, I'm not part of the problem. I know for a fact they are not. And it's because I know how leadership politics works. I know how HR processes work. I know how all this stuff works. And unfortunately, people get swept up in the mix. Might there have been some people labeled as poor performers in that? Yeah, maybe even all of them were. But I'll tell you right now, the way performance review cycles work, the way rating systems work, never mind nepotism and all this stuff, you can't objectively label someone as a poor performer. And so to just publicly do that and say, yeah, all these people that just got laid off were poor performers. Like, not cool, not appropriate, not accurate. And so if you are a hiring manager out there, or if you're someone who, you know, is been impacted by this, I just want you to hear from me. I know that that is not an accurate statement of who you are. And I am saddened and heartbroken that that is how it was messaged. And if you're a hiring manager, I will tell you right now, do not let that cognitive bias of, oh, laid off. Oh, and I heard poor performers. Not true. Take the time to get to know people and their capabilities and whatever. So there's my critique on it. On the flip side, what I do want to say, though, that should not be missed by people is if you actually read this email, um, I'll, I'll give them credit. I actually was like, this is actually a pretty comprehensive, seemingly honest attempt to lay out what they're doing and why and all of this. You're, you're in an impossible position. Like you could say whatever and people are going to be pissed off about it. And so I would encourage people like lay off a little bit. I, I really did think in general, this was actually not all bad. And they were very generous with their severance packages, like a minimum of six months, which again, I'm like, oh, these are poor performers, but a minimum of six months severance, like that's a pretty generous offer. So, I mean, they were generous with severance. Overall, they laid out what the plan was, why they did what they did and, and what the plan is moving forward. They didn't just say we're hiring people. They said why and tied it to the skills. And I think that piece, so one, I would say, hey, back off a little bit. I don't think they've been represented fairly. Um, I And that's, I'm saying that after my critique. But I think the other thing that I have said 
over and over and over. And I will continue saying it because I still don't think people are hearing the message. Jobs are changing. And if you are unwilling to change, you are exponentially more at risk of getting curb stomped. And when you read the letter and what they're doing, they said, we have changed what we're doing as a business and what we need from employees is this. And these employees over here, while we can argue whether they actually did an accurate assessment of that or invested in making that, clearly the way the system was set up, they need this. This was not that. And that is going to start happening more and more and more and more. I keep seeing reports of layoffs and all this stuff. Now, the encouraging part is for people listening who might be like, oh, no, it's the end of the whatever. It's not. I think if anything, we can be encouraged by this. They're moving into the AI space. They want to do a ton of stuff with AI, and they're doing it by hiring just as many people as they just let go. So humans are not leaving. We're not, they're not going, we just wiped out the company and we're replacing it with agents. No, they know they need people. They just need a different skill set in those people. And so let me tell you right now, if you are complacent and you are going, I do what I do and that's what I do and I'm not interested in changing, I am just telling you right now, that is going to get you in a situation where you end up labeled poor performer and on a riff sheet. And there's just no more gentle way to put that. And so I want to just encourage people that, hey, there is going to continue to be opportunity, but you're going to have to work at it and you're going to have to continue to develop and grow and build your skills to get there. Because if you don't, there were telegraph operators and switchboard operators and lamplighters and milkmen that probably also thought, this is what I do, this is what I've always do, and I'm not going to move away from it. And we saw how that went. 